Hey everybody, welcome back to Danette's Kitchen. It is December 28th, 2021. And here where I am in the Midwest, it is currently 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Pretty chilly. Pretty chilly. Um, we've had on and off snow, snow three or four inches and it stops and then it snows again. But that's, you know, kind of the weather for, you know, my neck of the woods. But this weekend, according to the weather forecast, on New Year's Day, it's expected to be a high temperature of four below zero Fahrenheit, negative four Fahrenheit, and a low temperature of... 21, I believe, below zero. Yeah. It's going to be pretty dang cold. Yeah, 21 below zero is what's expected for Saturday. Tomorrow's supposed to be probably a warmer day at six, ab six above for the high and two above for the low. So enjoy these balmy days. Yay, Minnesota weather. Um, I don't know where you are in the country, but the weather has been going like a pendulum, you know, back and forth. And now it's like, this is what we typically get in my neck of the woods, usually towards the middle or end of January. But, you know, the frigid temperatures. Um, why I moved here, I don't know. I moved here, loved it here, stayed here in spite of civil unrest, in spite of all the chaos and all the craziness that's happened through the years. There's a lot of good things to be said about um, the state where I live. But it's pretty dang cold. <laughs> and I did a vi previous video on dressing in layers. And for some people it may seem kind of silly because if you're used to dressing in layers, it's going to seem like, okay, why is she bothering to tell us this? This is kind of ridiculous. But for a lot of people, like people maybe in Arizona or Texas or Florida or other places that are used to the temperatures being a lot warmer, even North Carolina, used to the temperatures being a lot warmer. And if you get the slightest bit of snow, slightest little dusting, everything is shut down. Well, here where I live, this is kind of like expected. And when it doesn't happen, something's really wrong <laughs> because it is expected that much. Snow is such a big business that there are people that are getting paid just to plow that snow. They're looking forward to the snow falling so that they can have that job going out, either shoveling the walks, uh, clearing the areas for associations, for condo associations, driving the snow plows to keep the streets clear so people can drive and commute and get back and forth to work. That's how we're able to let things continue to flow in spite of how the weather gets here. But, yes, it really does get cold. And even with it being like 20 above, 20 above zero right now, 20 degrees Fahrenheit above zero, one of my neighbors has their windows open. Like, hello, somebody, what's wrong with that? What, what's really going on? You have your windows open in a condo building. <laughs> That's a part of an association. And it's really cold outside. And what happens when you have that cold air from outside rushing in, because some people, I guess, choose to want to feel like they're living on the equator. I don't know. Maybe he has his radiator cranked all the way up. I don't know the situation. Maybe somebody there is having major hot flashes. But it's bizarre. Your window's open, really? In the dark. In the cold, with the snow blowing and blustering and everything, 
what that can cause, that can cause pipes to burst. And when pipes burst under extreme pressures like that, kind of really messes things up for a lot of people, especially if you're in a building such as I'm in, where thankfully is on the other side of the building, but being in a building like I'm in, if the pipes were to burst for him because of what he's doing, keeping his windows wide open, and you know, people are grown, they don't want you to tell them anything, they don't want anybody's advice or anything, he's paying his mortgage, fine, do what you want to do, don't let it impact my side of the building. But if the pipes were to burst, it would affect that line, that whole stack. So him being on the lower level in his unit, it would affect all of those going up on that side, those that are above him in that, that stack of the pipes. So people do what they want to do. I, I wouldn't call it the wisest choices. You know, come up with other options. Um, but as I said, cold outside. It's going to be even colder here this weekend. This is a time for people to be dressing in layers. You know, I go to work. I am wearing, you know, I wear my clothes for work. And I put the poncho cape over top of that. And it has... The nice thick cow neck. I put on my snow pants. I put on my big coat, my scarf, my boots. I either carry a change of shoes in my backpack or else I leave a change of shoes at work and I'm ready to roll. And I usually keep an extra change of clothes at work too, just in case something bizarre happens, like, you know, pipes bursting and all that bizarreness, because you'd want to have something clean and dry to change into if. Perchance something were to happen. But just being at home, dealing with the temperatures outside, not wanting uh, a, 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 an electric or gas bill that's through the roof, you know, we try to, on this side of the building, we try to monitor our temperatures and keep keep them reasonable so that our utility bills are reasonable and affordable. But when I was growing up, it was, I believe, either 1977 or 1978, one of those years, when I was in Ohio, as a little girl, there was a blizzard. And granted, now living here, it's like, I see that kind of snow more often than not. but for where I was in Ohio, that was, it was pretty rare to see such an extreme amount of snow and the blustering, blowing winds and the trees swaying and not able to set back up. And I'm sorry if you hear a little slight hum behind me, that's the radiator coming on again because like I said, it is pretty chilly outside. So what can we do? You know, we were in our house. I mean, <clears throat> and it was a a house that, you know, my mom had bought on the cheap. That was when they had dollar houses and they were really cost a dollar. And then you'd have to fix it up. Well, she bought one and she fixed it up. She knew about the electrical and everything. She hired people for what she needed to hire them for. And she did the other work herself. She had everything expected and, and approved. And it was pretty awesome, you know. Um, so here we are coming together, not having a lot of covers or anything. We're just like, how are we going to keep warm? So we decided that we would all get together in the living room have that one location where we would all stay together, me and my siblings and my mom. And and my mom's friend, who was a college professor from downtown, he was in the area, car got stuck in the snow, came up and knocked on the door, come on in. 
He came in. Mom had a chicken in the refrigerator. She put it in a big pot and started boiling that chicken on the stove, threw some potatoes in the oven so that that oven would give us that heat in the environment. And we all looked around and said, what are we going to do? How are we going to stay warm? <laughs> You've got two covers on your bed. you got two covers on your bed. How many do you have on your bed? We decided to get all those covers together and layer them on top of each other, kind of spread out, sew them together, and make one giant heavy quilt. And of course, we had you know the rug underneath us on the floor, but then we were able to lay down together, stay warm together, using our body heat. It's almost like something from a movie, but that's what we really had to do because it was really cold outside. You know, and after she boiled that chicken down for a while, she tossed it in the oven with the potatoes and other stuff, and that became all our meal. So we had to enter into a mindset of survivalism because that situation came up, which we were not expecting, but we made it through. And nowadays, you can do the same thing. If you got some old jeans or clothes that you don't wear anymore and you're ready to toss them, you can take them and cut the pieces into strips. You can cut them into squares. Squares work a lot better. And it doesn't have to be all the same material. You can take something like this, something like this, cut out your squares, cut a bunch of them, and start sewing. You can sew by hand. You don't have to be a seamstress or a tailor to make a quilt. Just look at what you have. Look at your resources. Any ratty old t-shirts, jeans, scrap materials or whatever, clothes that are outgrown, worn out, falling apart, there's always still some use for them. And I don't mean keeping stuff in a way of like hoarding or whatever, but you can use them to make a quilt. Here's an example of one that I had started working on with a friend um, pre-COVID, and we didn't complete it. She ended up going into the hospital and dying, and not long after that, that's when we started to learn about the virus being here in America and even like in my state. We would take... We had a pattern, which was basically a piece of cardboard that was cut into a perfect square. And we would use that to cut out all different strips of material. And you just cut them in a bunch of squares, decide what size bed you're going to use it for. Are you doing it for twin size, full size, queen, king size? Or do you just really not care and you just need something extra to keep you warm? <clears throat> so we made several squares and patterned them out on the bed to make sure that it was enough to complete an actual quilt. And then little by little started putting them so that the design is kind of scattered. We're not trying to win a, a prize at the state fair with this. This was just something that we were doing as a, an opportunity to do something while we're spending time together talking and laughing and we knew it could be a useful resource for someone in the future. And so just scrapplings of material and even some of them like this, I don't know if you can tell because of the brightness, are a bunch of small squares that were sewn together to make a larger square, you know, sew them all together, which we did. And after she passed, I decided I would continue on with it. Still haven't finished it, but I'm going to be working on that this week. Have another piece of just a thin cotton material for the back side, and it's just one big solid piece. You can even use an old sheet for that as well. 
just so that your side with the patches with the very varied colors are on the front side the solid is the back side and if you have an old blanket that gets kind of pilly you know what i mean a little beady pilly or whatever throw it in a washer and wash it wash it dry it take it out and then spread it out and use this as the center lining for your quilt. So you'd have this on the front side, this in the middle, this on the back side. It's something that is possible and easy enough to do, and it will provide you an opportunity to have a little bit more warmth, especially if times are tough and you're having a hard time affording more blankets or it just got really cold on you really quick and maybe you and your family or a few friends are like, wow, what are we going to do? That's something that you can do to create yourself some extra warmth for your home. Or you could do something like this. If you've got knitting or crocheting skills and you happen to get some spare yarn or whatever, you can get busy and start working on something like this. You know, it's not just for women. Anybody can do this. So, and this one is just like a, a lap quilt that a friend that had done for me. Um, but the dollar store, even though the price is going up to $1.25 since now, they have yarn. And if you live around a Joanne Fabrics or Michaels or any place like that, you could either order yarn online or go in and pick it up. There's lots of knitting groups in the community. Some of them that actually just have way too much yarn and stuff. And, and they may say, well, I don't really want or need this. I think I just want to give it away. And they will box up, literally boxes, of yarn to give away. That yarn is useful. You can use it to make your own scarf, to make something like this, to make a hat, whatever. It's up to you. If that's what you want to do, though. I'm just saying these are some resourceful things that are options that are out there for anyone that's really interested in that. But speaking of the cold, for all you ice cream lovers out there, yesterday there was an ice cream recall. 8,040 pints of ice cream were recalled per the FDA, that's the Food and Drug Administration here in America. It's um, not salmonella and other things that I usually talk about whenever there's a food recall or whatever, but what it was was that some cookie dough got mixed into this the wrong type of ice cream. And so Maryland and Virginia Milk Producers Co-op Association, um, they had to do a recall because that cookie dough got mixed in and the ingredients from the cookie dough are not listed on those containers of ice cream. And you know, some people have food allergies there's a variety of different food allergies and things that could affect people in different ways. The ice cream brand is called Howling Cow Butter Almond Ice Cream. I've never heard of that one before. Um, and if you live in North Carolina or South Carolina, you should check your freezers because... That 8,040 pints of ice cream has only been distributed in North and South Carolina because it was only one lot 
of ice cream that was sent out. So, and it was sold in North Carolina and South Carolina, and it has sell-by date of September 15th. So, that's something that you may want to check into if you live in those areas. I don't know how the weather is in your area. Many places around the world, there are um, have been a lot of snowstorms. In places where usually you don't even hear about snow. Um, in Arizona, there have been brownouts a lot. A brownout is kind of like a blackout, but instead of the power just being completely out, completely dark for an extended time, it's more like where it's like, uh-oh, power may go out. What's going on? Blink. That's a brownout. Instead of um, the blackouts that a lot of other people are seeing. But I know that there are people in Arizona that have been raising their eyebrows and, you know, mentioning that the brownout situation has happened multiple times. And since it's happened multiple times, that's like your warning sign to like make sure that you have a plan in place. Make sure that you have a flashlight or a lantern of some kind or some alternative light source, even if it's um, those little power generator chargers, the little ones that I have that fit like in a lunch bag. It seems small and hokey, but you know what? They work. And they work for the Dr. Prepare power charger that I have. Will work for seven hours. Um, and I'll do another video talking about those again in case there are people that have missed those videos in the past. Sorry about bumping the camera. But it'll work seven hours overnight, which is good for people that have a CPAP or a BiPAP machine, some sort of life support. It really does work. Nebulizer, it'll work. It has a space to plug up where you can plug your computer up to it. You can plug up your phone to it. Um, whether you have an Android or an iPhone, you can plug it up. It has emergency like flashlight on the side that will have a strong beam if you just need general light to help you find things in the dark and it also has a beacon light that will flash if you need that as well ac and dc it even show you how how much battery time that you still have left on it it's a good thing to get it's not very expensive, but the prices of these things have been going up since the first video I did on them because now more people are seeing the power situation is very serious. So, something to consider anyway. Well, I won't keep you any longer. Thanks for joining me tonight, but didn't want to show you this is week two of the garlic. I have transferred it from the um, hydroponic garden to here because the tops are this big, which is very decent. And when I transferred them, the roots were as long as the tops are now. And that was a week ago. That's why I went ahead and I put them in here. And, and they were starting to multiply in the bulbs. So, that is going very well. I only had like four seeds planted for lettuce, but somehow I mistakenly put rose water in to the other hydroponic garden instead of regular water. Um, and rose water is good for your skin, for toning your skin. Um, but for some reason, I put the rose water in, and so those plants didn't make it, but it was only four seeds, so I'm not going to worry about that. Thank you again for joining me today, and I look forward to talking to you again soon, and be prepared, 
and have a good evening.